time to let the bumblebee fly. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Anik, I'm a classical pianist and it's time for one minute, 10 minutes, one hour challenge. Today with one of the most famous pieces, Light of the Bumblebee by Rimsky-Korsakov for piano solo by Rachmaninoff. Let's repeat the rules of this challenge. You take any piece of your choice, any part of this piece, you get three practicing sessions, one minute, 10 minutes and one hour. And after every practicing session, you have to try to perform the piece just the way it is in that moment. For everyone who is interested in how I'm practicing in detail, you'll find the uncutted version of this challenge on my Patreon, together with all the fingerings that I've been using. Check out the link in the description box. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. One minute. <laughs> okay, start.
Okay, let's talk about the difficulties I had with this piece. First of all, I needed a good fingering to get like all the little movements without getting stuck into the keys, which was a pretty big part of my work here. practice all these little movements. It helps me a lot to practice with different rhythms. I can't really explain why. I guess it has something to do with the fact that I can relax on the longer notes when I'm practicing with these rhythms. So it gets easier for me to find relaxation points when I'm playing faster afterwards. <laughs> This part was extremely confusing because I had to cross my hands and like if I play like this, like in, in the opposite direction, everything works fine. But as soon as I have to cross the hand, it, I don't know what happened in my brain, but like my, my right hand suddenly got like a little bit slower than my left hand and it was not matching anymore. <laughs> I knew that I can't fix this problem in only one hour. It, would take much more time to practice this, to find a solution for this. It has a lot to do with the brain. It's nothing that my fingers can't do, but you know, the brain is just confused in that moment. <laughs> A good fingering here is extremely important because, for example, if you're using too often the second finger or the fourth finger for all those little movements that are repeating all the time, your hand tends to get stuck in the keys. I think it has something to do with your brain and also something to do with the, well, the fact that your fourth finger is just a little bit weak and it costs a lot of energy. And the more often you use the fourth finger, the more tiring it gets for your whole hand. So I tried to avoid the fourth finger here. Actually, I, I'm not sure if if I use the fourth finger at all. <laughs> A good fingering does not only help to relax and to find a good uh, energy for your arm, but also it helps to create dynamics on its own. So I don't really have to think about the dynamic anymore while I'm playing. So I wanted to have like these little crescendo and decrescendo and therefore I wanted to create some more weight through my arm and through my wrist and therefore I changed the fingering. So it was possible for me to do this automatically without thinking about it and without forcing myself to do these movements. It was kind of natural. I think the fingering was in this piece one of the most important things that I worked on. First of all, it helped me to relax in many spots where I couldn't relax if I don't have the right fingering. It helped me to create dynamics and create timing and it supported me to like control everything. Oh!
Okay, this was the challenge for today. <laughs> it was uh, confusing, <laughs> let's say. All these uh, little notes, all the fast notes, and then like this. It took me a long time to get it. Actually, I didn't really get it in the end. I just put a lot of pedal there. So it was kind of cheating, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> what did I learn through this challenge? Well, the fingering is still one of the most important things because a good fingering can help me to have a lot of control over the dynamic, the timing, about my fingers in general, and also it helps me to relax on the right spots. If you're interested in how to find a good fingering, I did a little tip and trick video that we'll find up here. Maybe I'll continue doing some videos about this topic because actually fingering is like my favorite topic. And no, it's not what you think. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. If you'd like to support me and this channel, please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description box. We'll see us in the next Next videos. Bye. Ich weiß gar nicht, was ich sagen soll. <lacht>